Hello everybody, welcome back to another edition of the Ecostructure Machine Expert Training. I'm your host, Leandro Mada, and in this video, what we're going to see are the different timers that we have in the software. So, let's go to the presentation. So, as I mentioned before, I'm going to focus only in three different languages inside the software. Ladder, CFC, and Instruction Text. So, if we pay attention here, we have three different timers. We have the T on, delay on timer, or on delay timer, off delay timer, and pulse, um, timer pulse, I believe is name. It just generate the pulse. So um, we have uh, the names are T on, T off, and TP. And you can use them with an enable, an enable output. Okay. What we're gonna do now is that explain a little bit more how this timer is because it's not like uh, the normal function block that you had for add or multiply something. It it requires an instance. That's why you have in the top part these question marks. Okay, so what you need to do is to create an instance name based on that function block. This function block comes from the library called a standard. Okay. That's why you can see over here that I have used the name standard dot the name of the timer that I want. This standard library is not mandatory to use in any space. So when you want to define the name of the instance for a function block, you can use directly the T on or T off or TP directly. There is no need to add the standard. I just saw the just I just make it in here just to show you that it came from this standard library. So once you add it on the local PUU or a GBL, you can use the name of the instance you have defined it on these question marks, and then you can use the function block. So something important here is this number of this input DPT, okay? This PT input is defined as a time variable. Okay, so the time variable have a different structure inside the this variable. You just, in order to define a fixed time, you just need to use T hash and then the unit of time. For example, if it's 10 seconds, 10 and then the S for seconds. Okay, we're going to see that. So, this is how it works. So, they remain here the input, the Q, and the PT, which is the preset, and the actual value. So, imagine that we have the T on. Let me just change the view to this one. So, T on. Delay on. So, this is the Q. Okay, so... If I activate the input, I said one, this was taken from the help. So the actual value, okay, this is the value that I have for the preset, okay, PT. So it start counting. So the timer start counting, counting, counting until it reach the preset. When it reach the preset value that I have configured the output will be activated. Okay. Now, if I turn on this, the input, you can see over here, it is start increasing the value. But, at one moment, I release the input. So, as this actual value doesn't reach the, the press that I have configured, the output is not activated. Okay, that is what it means. So, the opposite way we have the T of. So, I have incrementing here the I have assigned one to the input that I have over here. For example, this one. So, the output will be automatically on. But as soon as I disconnect the input, 
So, okay. The counter will start increasing until it reach the present that I configure over here. So when this inside timer, which can be seen over here, the ET, which is the actual time, this value reach this preset, then the output would be up. Okay, so you can see here the delay that I have delay to disconnect the output. Okay, so in here you can see I have an activation of the input. Okay, and in the meantime, in the middle, I have a deactivation. So it starts counting the timer. But as the input start again, okay, and the actual value doesn't reach because I have a gap over here, the output will remain on, okay. And as soon as the out the input goes down again, okay, you can see the output is still on. Here the counter starts again from zero. Okay, just go for the value to zero again until it reaches the present and then you can see again here the delay that I have. Okay, this is how it works these two timers. And the other way, the other way no, that the diff the third timer that we have is here, the TP. So basically it generates a pulse. You can see the input and then the output will be automatically on but it will be on for the timer that I have already configured over here the present so it would send the output is going to be on the time that I have already defined over here it's going to be done only just one time okay and it doesn't matter if I execute too many times the input as you can see you will execute only just one time the output okay so these are the different uh, timers that we have in the software so as i mentioned before the pt input is time so this is the syntax that you can use in the software in order to make it work but the problem of having this probably is that it's going to be a little bit confusing for the customer for the user the operator to easily define the time or uh, easy access or entry to change the time so this uh, pt or time is based in milliseconds so if we for example want to assign a word variable or double word variable or whatever variable that it have for example from the hmi I can define this in this way so I have my variable that came for example from the HMI part okay that's going to be visible in the HMI then if it's in seconds okay I need to multiply by 1000 so I can have over here the value in milliseconds and this value I need to use a converter to time so it can indicate the second so this is how you can work on this and it will depend on how you're going to visualize the information on the operator on the hmi side so if you're going to use seconds the easy way is to uh, the customer you have two ways just explain a little bit more so if you don't want to do this part you can specify here a new variable new variable such as oh, can I change this part there we go erase it you cannot see it so if you don't want to use this part you can use another variable over here 
the gains from the HMI variable and in the indication on the HMI you can use a field but you need to put that the information is going to be in millisecond okay so if the customer wants five seconds the customer will use to use five thousand this is a five okay but if you want to make the things a little bit more easier instead of using this okay you can use another variables as i show you over here let's change this part mm -hmm. delete delete it so this value that you have you need to multiply by 1000 and then the value that you have over here will be in milliseconds and then this convert will allow you to enter the value the right information of the value on the pt so you can use it on the timer that you want okay so this is how you can make this uh conversion in case you want it. so let's go back to the slide and see how we can work on this one so let's use uh let's create a PV. we have already created one of the PU, and i'm going to use this one just because i just want it and then let's check the behavior so let's to, to go back here cfc is already open from the previous video so i'm going to add a box the on here you have two options you can define uh, whatever you want then the system will auto create the value that you want okay you can see it over here the other way is to go over here to find the timer that you want escape then you can see the question mark and if you want to find a wrong you can see the auto declaration again enter and it will appear and the last one is okay i'm going to use the tion escape here you can go uh, instance uh underscore tion this one's going to be tion and you can also define the namespace for this standard standard dot tion that's a different way to do it and if you go for example to the library manager and uh, you can see here the standard that you can use the timers you can see the timers over there and this is the information i take from the help um, okay so this is this part it's fine so you can use this name instead of this one oh copy paste it and here you can use for example uh, enable tion we can move this over here here the timer so this one will be the cfg tion just to configure the timer this one will be the output of the timer uh boom x timer output and this one will be the actual time uh this one indication yeah so if we now communicate and i'm going to make the trace because i want to explain further the trace later I already explained how to use the trace on the counter so you can follow that one to make it work so here you can see that you are aligned with the control you can see the times and everything so here the 10 ohm i'm going to specify how uh how it's going to be the second so if i want for example three seconds uh the timer on prepare value and specify here uh four seconds then uh the bar write values gonna be now 
but I'm going to specify a little bit longer so you can see the actual value here. So, 14 seconds. The bug, right values, here, enable on, the bug, right values. And you can see this counting up, okay? And then as soon as this one reach the 14 seconds, it will activate the timer output. Let's wait. And there we go. So if I disconnect this one, the bug, right values. There we go. It's working fine. So this is how you can do it. Okay. And the other thing that I was mentioned before is this one. For example, you have the um, uh, time. The configuration of the time is integer. Here you can multiply by 1000. Okay, it's a constant value. Oops, go here, here 1000. Okay, here you can make a converter box. It's going to be int to, I believe I can use two time. In the past, you need to define the initial value and then the output value. I believe this one is no longer available. So now here, second execution order by data flow. So we change execution. Then if we connect once again, everything is fine. I'm going to add the same value over here, uh, the 14 seconds. But instead of using the, uh, the time, need to use like this 40 only okay just the raw value right value over here you can see that you have the 14 seconds okay let me just put this again here you can see this counting <laughs> for this now and there we go okay so you will need to remember this part if you don't do that okay and you should just assign directly the value I'll just show you instead of saying the 14 seconds you will see 40 milliseconds so now this so I can show you once again as you can see 14 milliseconds so this is everything for the timers i believe i'm going to explain how to use it how you can use it very well here the only probably thing that i haven't mentioned is if you are using the timer here okay in the structure test uh, instance the off for example um the off in order to call this one to make it easier, just right click, input assistant, and instance call. We must find the instance that we have already defined, as you can see, is the off. Okay, so you can use and see the inputs and outputs that we have. So, this is it for the timers inside the EcoStruction Machine Expert. So, thank you very much for watching this video. I see you on the next one. Thank you.